The US Securities and Exchange Commission is a federal agency in the United States and it oversees and regulates the securities industry, stock and options exchanges as well as other financial securities and investment activities. Earlier this month, the SEC's X account was compromised leading to a false announcement about the approval of Bitcoin ETFs. Initially, the SEC did not know how the breach occurred, but they've since confirmed that a SIM swapping attack targeted the cell phone account linked to their X account. The SEC explained that the unauthorized party gained control of the SEC cell phone number through a SIM swap attack. This is a type of a cyber attack where an attacker can fraudulently convince the mobile carrier to transfer a victim's phone number to a SIM card under the attacker's control. During the attack, the hackers didn't access the SEC's internal systems, data or devices. The SIM swap essentially enabled them to reset the password for the SEC Gov account and issue the fake announcement. Now, the SEC is collaborating with law enforcement to investigate the SIM swap attack and has clarified that MFA was not enabled on the account which was apparently because they had requested X support to disable MFA due to login issues. However, had MFA been enabled via SMS, the hackers could have still breached the account by intercepting the one-time passcodes. However, using an authentication app or hardware security key could have probably stopped the attack. Overall, it's worth noting that over the last six months or so, there's also been a growing number of targeted takeovers of influential social media accounts. So let's look into exactly how someone can carry out a SIM swap attack. Each SIM card has a unique identifier, which is how mobile networks verify subscriptions to service providers and how they deliver phone calls and text messages to the right mobile device. So step one, in a SIM swap attack, Gathering information is key. For a SIM swap attack to work, threat actors need to successfully impersonate a victim and convince their mobile carrier to transfer the mobile service to another SIM card. To do this, they can claim that the original SIM card has been lost, stolen or damaged, and they provide the sensitive personal information to prove their identity. These details may be bought in data breaches, on the dark web or stolen using spyware or just simply through credential phishing whereby they will send you an email which looks completely legitimate, asking for the specific credentials that they require. Step two, swapping SIMs. The hacker will then ask a customer service representative to activate a new SIM card in the fraudster's possession. This ports the telephone number to the hacker's device, which contains the hacker's own SIM card. Once your carrier completes this request, all phone calls and texts that are supposed to go to you will instead go to the scammer's device. Step three, attack. Depending on what the motive is, they now have access to the information that is sent to that SIM used for logging in and they can see the login activity and move forward with their malicious plans. If you've enjoyed this type of content, do click the link below to join my Discord where we discuss all things cybersecurity and if it's been useful for you, please leave a like on the video. It massively helps the channel out and tells me that you're enjoying this type of content.